All right, so we move on to Monday's section of the lesson, and it says that we need to read Galatians 6, verses 7 and 8. Let's go to that quickly. Verses 7 and 8. It says, and this is from the New International Version, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Verse 8, whosoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whosoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. So it says, Wayne E. Oates observes, Marketplace thought about the presence of God is one of sentimental familiarity. A country western song speaks of having a little talk with Jesus, almost as if the Lord were a chum with whom one has a chit-chat. In stark contrast, however, it is the persistent biblical wisdom that God's presence come to us when we know it not. But the least our awareness of the presence is an afterthought. How does this statement sync with the, this week's key text? Might Jeroboam's chummy, sentimental familiarity with God have influenced his disastrous choice to allow anyone to serve as priest? What does this teach us about reverence for our holy God today? So let's go back to the key text then and look at the key text once more. Even after this, Jeroboam did not change his evil ways, but once more appointed priests for the high places from all sorts of people. Anyone who wanted to become priests, he consecrated for the high places. This was the sin of the house of Jeroboam that led to its downfall and to its destruction from the face of the earth. Hmm. So do, does this mean that he had done wrong before. He had been spared the shriveled hand and went back to the very same thing. Is that what you get from it? All right, let's let's go to First Kings chapter twelve, and we go to verse twenty-five, and it says here Jeroboam had Shechem and Ephraim, and he lived there. And he thought to himself that the kingdom will revert to the house of David, right? And they will king me and kill me and return to King Rehoboam. Um, verse 28, he made, after seeking advice, it says he made two golden calves. And he said to the people, it is too much for you to go to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, Israel. The thought came to me too. Sometimes when people suggest... Uh, certain courses of action, sometimes it is not for our good. It's actually for their good because this would secure his political power, right? And not necessarily for the, the spiritual benefit of the people. If he was really concerned about the spiritual benefit of the people, he would not have dissuaded them to, to go, right? But for his political um, purpose, longevity, um, security. He built these golden um, calves, right? Now it says, and this was a sin, and this thing became a sin. And the people worshipped the one at Bethel, Bethel, and went as far as Dan to worship the other. Jeroboam, verse thirty-one of 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 chapter twelve. Jeroboam built shrines on the high places and appointed priests from all sorts of people even though they were not Levites. He instituted a festival on the 15th day of the month, like the festival held in Judah, and offered sacrifices on the altar. This thing he did in Bethel, sacrificing calves, um, sacrificing to the calves he made there. And at Bethel, he also installed priests at the high places that he had made, and on the 15th day of the 8th month, month of his own choosing, he offered sacrifices 
at, on the altar he built there and so instituted the festival for the Israelites and went up to the altar to make offerings. So here we go. So this is the first instance when he does this, right? He appoints people. But I have a question. Does it matter if he appointed Levites? Would it have mattered? Because they would have been making sacrifices to an idol. Okay, all right, fair, fair enough. So had it been the Levites, they would have told him, say, good. Exactly. Good. Let. Good. So let us look now at that 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 concept you know that thought is very instructive you know because let's look at david selecting um job to carry out the message to carry out the act of killing uriah it's because he believed that job would have done it right so if we go now to the last verse of chapter 13 Verse 33 it is, and remember now, after all of this had happened, it says, even after this, he did not change his evil ways, but once more, so you see that once more points to the fact that it was done before, appointed priests for the high places from all sorts of people, and anyone who wanted to become a priest, he consecrated for the high places. This was the sin. This was the sin. You understand? So, other sins go on, you know, but this one was the one that led to Jeroboam's um, downfall and the destruction of his house. And, and, and I'm thinking too that sometimes you might have somebody coming to you and asking you to do a particular thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, you have to be very necessarily in that person's circle. Yes. 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 The mm -hmm. You know, um, perhaps Christian, you know, willingly jumping in on time and mm -hmm. carrying out the task. They don't know what it's up somebody's sleeve. Yes. An agenda. Mm -hmm. And this clearly shows that um, probably the common people thought it was such a privilege for them to serve in the in the role of priest right not knowing that they were fulfilling an idolatrous agenda um as proposed here <laughs> 